Hey guys, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Fritz, but mostly I want to talk about Fritz two-part today. Um, a little bit about dosing, I mean when you first start a tank, sometimes you can get away with just doing a lot of water changes. That's when you don't have a lot of coral, when you're just getting started. Uh, water changes are a great way to reset, so you just get some good salt, Fritz, and uh, you do water changes. Then you can move into putting like a calc wasser supply into your um, ATO, your top off order, and that can help you maintain a little more stable alkalinity and calcium. If you notice that the water changes alone aren't cutting it, and you can tell that by testing, if you test right after a water change and then you test right before a water change, I'd say if you're dropping more than a point within a week, it's time to start doing something to buffer it, um, a point in alkalinity. Um, if you see your calcium dropping low, uh, you may want to start supplementing something in between your water changes. And Kalkwasser can do that for a little while. And then you'll need to step up to the two-part. And last but not least, then you can even go into something like a calcium reactor. I don't use one of those, although I'm probably a candidate for one at this point, because I am going through a lot of two-part. But let me explain what it is. You've got two parts, and they always forget the magnesium for some reason. It's um, alkalinity and calcium, and I'm probably pointing to the wrong ones right now. <laughs> but um, you have to dose them separately, and you can't have them poured in at the same time because they'll react with each other in a strong solution. So Fritz offers you these, um, this is the alkalinity, part one. Fritz offers you these ready-made liquid forms, and they come in smaller bottles, but as with anything, your um, your packaging, your shipping, your whole process sometimes costs more than actual the stuff that's in the bottle. So this is one of those cases where buying a bigger bottle saves you a lot of money. I mean, I've seen these go for 16 to 20 dollars, and I've seen these go for 20 to 25 dollars, and there's four times as much in the gallon than there is in this little bottle, approximately. But um. Now the magnesium, I don't go through as much as um, two-part calcium and alkalinity, so I will uh, buy the smaller bottle on those. So that's just what makes sense. So I'm getting the liquid ones and, uh, you know, it's one of those things again that it starts to get expensive. I'm going through, oh, I use the Voss bottles for dosing and uh, they're 800 milliliters and I'm going through one a week. So this you know, started to get expensive because every time I ran out, it was $50, you know, or if I could get it on a good sale, maybe it was $40, 20 each. So I switched to this. Jessica from Fritz told me about this. She says, if you're comfortable mixing your own, you can do this. And what it is is the calcium comes in one container, okay? The alkalinity is broken up into two containers. Is, is, do I have them here? Yes. The alkalinity is a sodium bicarbonate and a sodium carbonate. So you need to mix both of these to make the alkalinity. All right? And then same thing with magnesium. We've got two different types of magnesium. You've got the mag flake and the magnesium sulfite. All right? Something I don't think you get, uh, I've, I've read somewhere that some people use Epsom salt to raise their magnesium. I think it'll raise your magnesium, but it's only one of these, and uh, I forget which one it is. But you need both of these. And this is kind of, when they talk about being ionically balanced seawater, this is what we're talking about. Having the correct amounts of the correct chemicals in the salt mix. So um, the reason why I use Fritz two-part is because I like the salt. And I was assured that the chemicals in the liquid and dry form are the exact same components or elements that are in the salt when they mix it. Obviously, you've got the first part, the, the salt, <laughs> but then um, actually all of these are salts, but um, considered salts. But you've got your main part, which is the salt, um, sodium chloride, maybe. It's, I'm not a chemist, and I don't pretend to be. But I'm going to mix up some of this dry two-part, and uh, I'll take you through how I do it. Now, one of the most important parts of mixing two-part is you don't want to do it with cold water. You want to use good, clean RODI water. So I use two of the bottles that I used to have. You know, two bottles that are empty. 
And right now I have them filled about two-thirds of the way with RODI water. And I soak them in this, which is just hot tap water. Okay? And that keeps the water in this. It warms up the RODI. If you try to pour it into the cold RODI, you're going to have a big problem trying to mix it properly. So let me get set up and we'll go over the mixing. So I'm going to do the calcium bottle first. And I've got my um, warm RODI water in my calcium bottle. You can use a, any other bottle. And to be honest, the clear bottle would be easier because you could see actually what's going on. But we'll do the calcium first. And that's the easiest one because it's one part. It's two cups per gallon. And that's it. Just mix it. And, you know, you don't want to start dosing it till it's fully mixed. So I'll give it some time. So I have a funnel just to keep it clean. The directions on here do not tell you how to make liquid two-part. But it does give you dosage ideas on here. It says dosage one gram per 10 gallons will raise your calcium level approximately... 10 ppm so and then it tells you again a teaspoon per 10 gallons will raise your calcium approximately 50 ppm so of course due to grain sizes things like that you'd be better off going with the grams the weight because you know sometimes your measurements aren't as good but I reached out to Brandon from Fritz and uh, you can find him on Facebook and he was a lot of help he found me a recipe for what they do, and when I mixed it, I actually did a test with the alkalinity. I used the, I still had some of the liquid alkalinity, and I mixed it up according to them, and it seemed to be a little bit stronger than what the liquid was. Now, I could have mixed it a little higher, and uh, my, my testing methods probably weren't as accurate as a chemist would be, but, so, um, putting this in here is obviously going to make a mess. So I have a smaller scoop, and it's a nice fresh container, so it's right up to the rim of course. Now, these are cheap measuring cups, so these are approximate. Kind of try and level it off best you can. I'm more worried about spilling it all over the table than and wasting it. <laughs> oh, pour it in there. Now, most of these chemicals, when you mix them with water, will have a reaction and it will create even more heat. So, the best way to mix it is, you know, like a martini. And I feel the bottom of this is very, very hot. So the whole container is getting hot, so bleed some pressure off and go back at it. Keep bleeding pressure off. You don't want this to explode on you. Obviously, you should have eye protection, gloves, and yes, it's hot. And I turned my fan off so I don't blow chemicals all over the place, so now I'm sweating. <laughs> Is that I'm gonna close this actually it was two cups <laughs> and I only put one in there so mix the one cup and we'll do another cup sorry I didn't go over that it's two cups of this calcium chloride calcium chloride two cups per one gallon of water I bleed that off while I'm making my next one sure you guys know what alkalinity and liquid calcium are like. You wouldn't want a bottle of it exploding around anything you care about. Pour it in again. Make a mess. Let me put the cover on this. And get shaken. It's so hot, it actually, I can, I smell plastic. 
so you don't think I'm a wimp. 142 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Almost need baker's mitts or something. But yeah, let's let's let that breathe like a fine wine over here. So the alkalinity, actually on the recipe chart, told you how to make a gallon of this, the bicarbonate, and the carbonate. So I took it upon myself to mix them both into one gallon instead of making a gallon of each. Isn't it's not two part, it's really like three part, right? <laughs> so I'll put this up here. And what it says is the bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, they want one cup and four tablespoons. Okay, so one cup and four tablespoons. So I'll start with my tablespoons. This is more of a powder. The calcium is more of a pellet. I don't know if you could tell that on the video. So for any of you who have hung in there this long, I thought I would speed up the process a little bit. Uh, you really don't need to watch me pour and put chemicals into water. But um, just wanted to point out, we do not have to directly follow the mixing instructions that I got from Brandon. Um, you can make this a lot stronger. You can dissolve a lot more of it into water. But I was trying to target the liquid that they sell simply because my um, dosing pumps and everything are all kind of calibrated to what it was. So over time, we can mix it stronger. But right now, we were doing the um, sodium bicarbonate was four tablespoons and one cup. And then I add the sodium carbonate just one cup directly into it. Uh, this didn't get as warm as the calcium. It, it got a little warm and then it started to actually cool off and uh, make the like a vacuum inside. It was actually distorting the shape of the bottle a little bit. But this will all calm down once it's finally mixed. It's just the reactions while it's mixing. So mixed it up. Um, I still think the, the liquid is a great alternative um, if, if you don't want to go through the trouble of mixing this or worrying about you know how to do it and there I am just topping it off with RO water because I had room for mixing so that's basically it and there's my Voss bottle now I didn't go through a lot of trouble with the Voss bottles like everybody else does I just drilled a hole in the top that allowed me to put a rigid tubing to almost the bottom of it and I have one mark calcium and one mark alkalinity and I'll show you how I sit them back under the tank there I am filling it up and that amount right there is about a week's worth in my tank so there we go underneath um, I'm kind of anal they have to be in the right order <laughs> and thanks for watching I uh, hope this helped somebody and we'll see you on the next one.